Okay, so I guess we can get started. Uh, my name is Steve Anderson, along with Mimi. I'm one of the co-chairs and organizers of the festival, um, at a festival and conference. And um, I'm very excited about this morning's screening, the first uh, screening of the DIY Summit. Um, and I'll just say a, a couple words by way of introduction of Jonathan McIntosh, our curator for this program. Um, when we started thinking about uh, DIY media back in 2005, 2006, um, one of the categories that we knew we wanted to include were these very interesting uh, political remixes that were showing up online. And we went and searched for a bunch of them online and um, in, indeed discovered a whole cache under a website called Caped, Masked, and Armed, all of which were posted anonymous. And we thought, who is doing this? Who, what, what group of people is responsible for these amazing videos that we're finding? It turned out that they were all done by Jonathan McIntosh. So we tracked him down, invited him out to our planning session last year, uh, and we're very pleased to be able to make him one of our, our curators for this program. Um, I guess Mini already did all the official thank yous, but I'll just do a, a quick recognition of the uh, Arts and Humanities Visions and Voices Initiative uh, here at USC that sponsored the event, as well as the, uh, the MacArthur Foundation and the uh, Annenberg Center and the uh, Institute for Multimedia Literacy, all of which have been uh, key supporters of this event. So, um, without any uh, further ado, I'd like to introduce Jonathan McIntosh and the Political Remix Program. Uh, thank you very much. Can you all hear me if I talk at this level? I hope. Uh, okay, so um, by way of introduction, I'm going to start off the program. So I'm going to show a video, which I made recently. Uh, then I'm going to talk about what, what this is, what this genre is of Political Remix video. Um, what it's not, uh, what's, what its form takes, and then um, we're going to run into this rather long program of um, examples um, or highlights. So we'll try and see if this works. Gary? What would you like to do with your life? You want to be like the good guys riding around with the, the white hats? No. To be honest, I want to be in the bad guys, real bad guys. Bad guys that tie people up. Torture them. Shock their titties with a car battery. Who cares about those good guys? Bad guys, they're the ones. You may go back to class now, Gary. Get strength for now, strength for later. Learn more at goarmy.com. A little introduction. That was uh, something that I made recently. Um, a little bit about who I am. Um, so I'm a political activist. I've been doing that uh, since about 2001, September 11th, 2001. Uh, my work, uh, it's a date you might know. Um, uh, so I work for social justice, human rights uh, work. I've done that both here in the United States, um, mostly in Boston and in New York there. I also do that uh, here. I've uh, done some work here in LA as well. Um, and I spent a year in Jakarta, Indonesia, working with social justice movement um, folks there. Uh, I'm a teacher at the Museum School, which is the School of the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston. Um, I teach uh, Photoshop and web design and CSS, mostly. Um, and I'm an artist, so I may, I've been uh, making work like this, which is political remix work, but I also do um, graphics, and I also do um, some street theater stuff, and I also do um, photography. Um, so that's sort of me in a nutshell. Um, I'm assuming that you're all here because you're interested in the topic, um, because you want to see uh, examples of this work, and you want to know where this is going and where it came from, um, and maybe uh, also kind of try to assess the cultural impact of this. What does it do? Does it do anything right, for our society, our larger culture? Um, <clears throat> I'm assuming also that many of you are either or creators or viewers, um, and you never know what you might be in the future, so you could be making something similar at some point. Um, I guess when I think about political remix video, um, I think of it as an increasingly relevant and important form of DIY media. Um, I think about it in terms of uh, how it can challenge dominant media myths and media messages um, about our culture, and about our society, and about ourselves. Um, and I think of it as a way to build an alternative um, 
independent culture uh, of resistance and liberation to power systems. And when I say power systems, I'm not so much talking about individuals who are in power, but I'm talking about institutions, um, corporations, media, uh, social norms, that kind of thing. Um, so I wanted to define, or try to define, I, I don't know if it's been done yet, or anyone's attempted to define what political remix video is. It's very, there's a, there's a wide range of what is political and is also remixed, right? So I just wanted to start by talking a little bit about that and, and trying to figure out what it is in my own mind, and then you all can help too. Um, and again, this is my definition that I've kind of come up with through this curation process. I've been looking online, searching, scouring the internet, uh, trying to find not only videos, but also who makes them. The videos are a little bit easier to find than the who makes them part. That can be very, very difficult. Um, most of them are anonymous or under some sort of alias that's like you know, Ninja 77, so I, I don't know who that is. Um, people don't want to be found a lot of the time. Um, so what is political remix video? Um, well, start with the name. So it's, it's political, but it's not just about government institutions. It's not just about critiquing the government or the formal political structure that we have. Um, it's much wider than that, and so it's talking about economic issues, social justice issues, um, power issues, race, class, gender, sexuality, right? So all of those things sort of po political in a very loose sense. Um, it's remixed, and so the source material, which you'll see later on, is everything from movies to TV shows to ads to trailers to um, music videos, right? And that those things um, are then remixed to tell a different story than the one that it originally had. So that's remixed. Um, it's video, mostly. I mean, it's called video. You have the main component is video, except that there's also a lot of sound work that goes into this. And so for that last video that I just showed, there's sound from 24, and there the screen is from 24. There's the TV show. Um, the audio is from a different film, and right. So that stuff's all laid in there. And you, maybe if you do your job right, you don't know, you don't re realize that it's not audio that doesn't go there, but it does come from other sources. And so we're also remixing media uh, sound. Um, a lot of it uses stills. Um, I don't use stills in mind, but a lot of folks do. Um, it's easier. So if you make a slideshow and put music to it, that you have a political remix, and you're just using stills and music for that. Um, as well as some graphics and logos, sometimes corporate logos especially, people will use those, uh, or, or text. Um, uh, it's, it's do-it-yourself, so it's DIY on media. Um, it's often, most often, not done by an organization, or a company, or an institution. Um, or even sponsored by those folks, and I think one of the reasons is because of the risk involved and the, and the legal doubt about what you're, you're doing. Um, so it's done by uh, individuals, by artists, uh, by students, by activists. Um, it's critical, so it's highly critical of the source material that it's using most of the time, not always, but most of the time. Um, and that, that part, I think, is unlike a lot of other remix work in that you know, we're taking something and we're remixing it, and then we're saying, well, we're really going to be very critical of what we, we're remixing. So others, a lot of other remix work might be sort of celebrating that, that sort of material. Um, it's without permission, almost exclusively, um, which I'll talk about a little bit more, but uh, so there's this intellectual property that's owned by institutions or corporations or, or government, um, and it's being appropriated and remixed. So you're taking this very carefully constructed PR image that, that an institution is putting out, um, you're, you're taking it and then you're using it, you're remixing it and then you're using it against them. Right? So you're using their own PR against them. Um, and that requires, it's very hard to get permission to do that, as you might imagine. Um, and then lastly, it's for public consumption. And so this type of work is meant for the general public. Right? So it's not meant necessarily for a community of people who do this. It's not meant for um, like-minded folks necessarily either. It's just anybody. Um, and it's put out on YouTube, it's put out on, um, on the net in, in, in ways to, to see, for as many people as possible to see it. Um, and so it's not really for sort of a specialized interest of enthusiasts to do this kind of work. Um, and it's not really meant for academics either. Um, and I feel like that's an important small point. Um, so for the purposes of this presentation and for the way that I've come to think about this through this curation process is, I want to, is, is that I want to talk about what it's not for me. I mean, you're all certainly welcome to disagree, and you can have a conversation about that. Um, but from what I've seen and what I've found in my definition that I'm building, um, is that it's not usually a celebration of the source material, the source media, which I 
which has been remixed, which I said before. Um, it's not usually a celebration of power systems or institutions that are, that are functioning. Um, and it's not usually a celebration of that dominant media or message or myth that's coming through. Um, so it's not a celebration. Um, it's also not a commercial or an advertisement, which may be self-explanatory, but it, it's taking them and it's if then critiquing them. It's not creating advertisements or something, an idea. Usually, not, not usually. Um, and it's not hate speech. And so I didn't include any hate speech. I didn't include anything that's pro-violence, anything that's sexist, racist, anti-queer, et cetera. Although, if you want to find that stuff, um, it's readily available. Um, so I'd like to say that when we do watch these, I don't necessarily agree politically with the things that are being shown. Um, I don't necessarily think they're all smart, or they're all effective, or they're all strategic. Um, I don't, and I don't necessarily think that they're all left. Um, they all certainly have a critical message of, of the dominant culture. Um, but we can have a conversation about whether um, an Arab woman who remixes the way Arabs are shown in major motion pictures and to show that it's being that they're being stereotyped and unfairly that that is left or not left or what that is, right? Um, but I would say that it's not exactly, but it is critical of dominant media. Um, <clears throat> so what is the form that these things take? Um, and what is the difference between, say, activist media, like indie, like, like indie media projects, which we're gonna be talking about, um, or showing, I guess, uh, later. John's gonna be showing some, some great stuff. Um, what's the difference between that genre of activist media and political remix video? Um, because a lot of times, the message can be exactly the same, right? You can have a message about, Torture not being a good thing to do, right? Um, and one is you go out and you, you shoot something and you put it together and you interview people and you, you make your own original media. And one is that we're taking CNN's footage or we're taking um, footage from Ajax Fox Press or wherever and then we're, we're re remixing that. So there's a, there's a difference there. Um, I kind of try to categorize things in terms of styles as I was finding all these videos. I'm, I have a a website, a blog that I've been collecting things on, and you're all welcome to go and check that out. It's um, politicalremix.wordpress.com. Um, so, uh, curate, like, who creates this stuff? And who, how can they do that uh, quickly? Um, you have to have access to technology, and more and more people are able to do that. Um, as this technology video editing becomes more readily available, it's even on available online sometimes. There's full sites where you can just go online and while you're there, make something. Um, uh, so there's that, ac uh, that access part. Um, you have to know how to use it, at least a little bit. Um, um, and there's a, you'll see a variety of, of, of different types, and some of them are easier to do, and they have you know, skills and music and that's put together real quick, but a lot of them, I think, take a huge amount of time for the, for the people who are creating them to do. Um, and so you need, in time, where you also need money, which can't be working for that. Um, but you also have to come from cultures and communities that value this type of work over something else. Right? You, you could be out doing what? You could be earning money, you could be um, out in, engaged in a collective political process, you could be doing activist work. Um, and so you have to be from a space where that's encouraged and it's motivating um, and it's valued, um, both culturally and community-wise. Um, so I guess the, qu the other question that comes to mind is who, who would want to do this? What do we want to do? People who remix this stuff get out of it because um, it's there's legal risk involved, or at least there's the threat of legal risk. Um, there's certainly not fear around that. Um, you're not going to get if you're going to do it anonymously, which most people do. You probably won't get a lot of public recognition. Um, you won't get fame. There isn't really a community of people because there's this sort of fear of, of what's going to happen to you if the corporation or media people come after you. Um, you get you know some some praise from strangers or from friends, but you also get an incredible amount of hate comments or mail. I, I do anyway. Um, I guess that depends on your on your content, but it all, you're not going to make any money certainly uh, doing this. So what are the what's the motivation to do? Um, and I have jotted down a few things that kind of came to mind while I was either talking to people or thinking about my own work. Um, and one is it is empowering. It's empowering to create this kind of thing and, and put your voice directly into uh, the discourse about these important issues. Um, it turns you from a passive consumer into an active producer, active creator. Um, I feel like that's a, also a very empowering thing. Um, it gives voice to 
either marginalized views or what I would say is perceived um, marginalized views. I don't think they're actually that marginal. I think that they're just not presented in dominant media as such. Um, and then it gives a, a, a space for moral, ethical, um, and sort of human outrage about injustice, um, which I think is a theme you'll see in a lot of these. Um, <clears throat> so what does it do? What's the impact on our society? Um, it can protect, it can, it can be, and these are all it can be, it doesn't, they don't all do this, I don't want to say that everything here does that, but it can help to correct the identity of powerful institutions. Um, it can help to sustain those involved in uh, a grassroots political struggle because you're, if you're struggling day to day and you're, and, and you're working to change the way society functions, you kind of want to laugh once in a while and you kind of want some, some reinforcement that you're on the right track. And you don't always want to watch a documentary about how horrible things are. And so there's, um, this is a different form of media that can, I think, help sustain those folks who are involved in that kind of ch uh, process of change. Um, <clears throat> it creates alternative narr narratives and stories, and then I think can infuse those narratives and stories into the mainstream culture or into the dominant media. Um, um, it promotes a culture of critique as opposed to a culture of passive obedience, which I think is a, a positive thing. Um, it challenges power, it challenges powerful institutions again, but also dominant, these, these dominant myths about ourselves that are being fed to us. So we're being told who we are, we're being told who our culture is, who our society is, and it helps us challenge that and create um, our own interpretation of what we are. Um, and it expands this sort of controlled discourse. There's a, there's a controlled discourse in, in, in mainstream media between this side and this side, and this, you know, it gets you this little box that you're supposed to think everything goes inside of, and so it allows us to expand that, um, and uh, expand that, that discourse to include things that are not necessarily part of that small media box. Um, it also extends our uh, imagination uh, about the possibilities of a different world or a, or a change, I mean, you can imagine as one we're going to watch today, which is called Bush for Peace, where someone remixed Bush to talk, have him talk about peace. That's a way for us to help us imagine what would it be like to have a president, even this one, who is um, promoting a different type of foreign policy or a different type of world. Um, so, uh, if I'm going to get right to these videos, which I know you all want to watch. Um, but very quickly, it, I used to think that this type of work couldn't really change much. It really couldn't change the way the world functions. Um, it, it couldn't change the world, right? Um, and the reason that I thought that uh, was because I think that political change, real political lasting institutional change, systemic change, is comes from collective action, not from individual action. Um, I think that's what politics is, it's collective action. Um, and so this type of work is very individual. Right? It's various, one person sitting down and being outraged about something, being upset about something, thinking something's funny, whatever it is, and then using their point of view to make something that's very individual and then putting it out there in the world. Um, but I have come to sort of at least reconsider that point of view a little bit, um, in that I think that these bits of cultural, um, these bits of cultural critique uh, can help us move our culture and our society um, into a uh, direction that I would like to go, a more human direction, um, but also can help create narratives and stories about ourselves and, like I said, infuse those into mainstream media um, and, and help create liberatory and um, critical messages. Um, and that, of course, is in combination with that collective action that's going on with, and you'll see, I'm sure, parts of that in the activist media section. Um, so it, it, can, it can also lead, I think, people from place that they are into in, from individual stuff to into more collective action as well. Um, so I'm going to attempt to make the videos play now.
will block you. We will, we will rock you. Some may ask, why rock out now? The answer is clear. These are the times that rock men's souls. I instructed our military commanders to totally rock Baghdad. And I repeat this here tonight. We will, we will rock you. We will, we will rock you. We will. Oh, I think that we just uh, had another satellite cross paths. Not like left far. That's the sound of the video tape being rewound. We will, we will rock you. And let me say to everyone listening and watching tonight: May God continue to rock our nation, the United States of America. country, you got to make the money first. Then when you get the money, you get the power. Then when you get the power, then you get money. I want you to see what a good boy I be. It's a thousand dollars. With that kind of money, you can buy the Supreme Court. You short a couple of mil, I go on the street for you. I make a couple of moves. A mill here, a mill there. You got it. It's serious money. <laughs> me, I want what's coming to me. In the world, she go. In everything in it. Come here, give me a kiss. Come here. Come here, come here, give me a kiss. You got some fucking attitude, you know that? Hey, hey fuck you, man! Who put this thing together? Me, that's who. Who do I trust? Me. Do you want to go to war? Do you want to go to war? We'll take you to war, OK? I take you out the fucking house! I told you, man. I told you. Don't fuck with me. No, but you wouldn't listen. 
Right, you stupid fuck! Look at you now! You're all a bunch of fucking assholes. You know why? You don't have the guts to be what you want to be. You need people like me. You need people like me so you can point your fucking fingers and say, that's the bad guy. So say good night to the bad guy. Do you know I eat octopus three times a day? I got fucking octopus coming out of my fucking ears, mate. How'd you like that? You know what capitalism is? Get fucked. Dad, fucking you fucked, stop dude. saying fuck all the time. Real contribution to human history. Can't you see what we're becoming? We're losers. We're not winners. We're losers. I have Nick the pig as a friend. What kind of life is that? Fuck you, I fly to cash myself to the Bahamas. Come on, get yeah. There's been a lot of talk about this next song. This song is not a rebel song. This song is Sunday. Bloody Sunday. I can't believe the news today. Can't close my eyes and make it go away. How long? How long? Must we sing this song? How long? Too, too, too long. Too long. Tonight, we can be as one. Tonight, tonight, tonight. Broken bottles under children's feet. Body strewn across the dead damn streets. But I won't heed the battle call. It puts my back up, puts my back up against the wall. Sunday, bloody Sunday. Sunday, bloody Sunday. Sunday, bloody Sunday. Sunday, bloody Sunday. Let's roll. And the battle's just begun. This many lost. And tell me who has won. The trench is dug within our hearts. Mothers, children, brothers, sisters, sworn apart. Sunday, bloody Sunday. Sunday, bloody Sunday. How long? How long? Must we sing this song? How long? Too, 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 too long. For too long. Tonight, we can be as one. Tonight, tonight, tonight. Sunday, bloody Sunday. Sunday, bloody Sunday. Let's roll it. Anyone who wants more details on my agenda can find them online. The web address is not very imaginative, but it's easy to remember. Part, part, dot, dot. Wipe the tears from your eyes. Wipe your tears away. Wipe your tears away. Wipe your tears away. Wipe your bloodshot eyes. Sunday, bloody Sunday. Sunday, bloody Sunday. Sunday, bloody Sunday. Sunday, bloody Sunday. Let's roll. And it's true, We're not a me. One fact is fiction and TV reality. And today, the millions crime. We eat and drink while tomorrow they die. Sunday, bloody Sunday. Sunday, bloody Sunday. Sunday, bloody Sunday. Sunday, bloody Sunday. We are war. We are war with terrorism, racism, but most of all, we are war with ourselves. We are war. We 
war. Uh -huh. God show me the way. Yeah. We at war with terrorism. Yeah. We at war. Yeah. We at war. Racism. Yeah. We at war. Racism. God show me the way because the devil. But most of all, racism. We at war with terrorism. But most of all, God show me the way. We at war. God show me the way. Devil's trying to break me down. But most of all, but most of all, but most of all, we at war ourselves. We at war ourselves. God show me the way because the devil's trying to break me down. Kids who go to bed hungry. Sick kids. Kids without decent housing. We're murdered. Health care or education. In Birmingham. On a Sunday and in Sunday school. Health care or education. In a presentation. It's just over 13 million. And nobody can. The United States will not ignore your oppression. Under the name uh, Liberation. Or excuse your oppressors. Very beautiful. Very good. All South Africans, but in reality, fish. Little black boys and black girls will become part of the decision-making process. What will happen when you stand for your liberty? What will happen? But in reality, fish. We will stand with you. If you're not prepared, we will stand with you. If you're not prepared, we will stand, we will stand up for black people and people of color in South Africa in this great bastion of democracy. They put their club upside your head. What will happen with you? What will happen with you? What, 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 what will happen when they come for me? But in reality, vision. There is only one force of history. It's perhaps well to ask what kind of a nation we are. Nobody asks for the American troops to go there. So what direction we want to move in? You went there to protect your own interests. And that is the force of human freedom. You went there to protect the expansion of freedom in all the world. Your own interests. I still have human freedom. Human freedom. Let it go. Let it go. So help me God. But in reality, a systematic destruction. What we must do is to start talking as to how. Human freedom. To how. That must be structured. How do we want to attain it? In the heart of this great city, we saw tragedy arrive on a quiet morning. September the 11th. September the 11th. September the 11th. September 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 11th, September 11th, September 11, 2001. Saddam Hussein, Saddam Hussein, Saddam Hussein, Saddam Hussein, Saddam Hussein, Saddam, 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 Saddam Hussein.
danger. Continuing danger. Hour of danger. Very, very dangerous world. A grave new threat. Horrific acts of atrocities. Murderous regimes dedicating to killing us. Tyranny and terror. Slaughtered thousands. Weapons of mass destruction. Weapons of mass destruction. Weapons programs. The deadliest of weapons. Terrible weapons. Nuclear weapons. Nuclear weapons. Poison gas. Torture chambers. Mass graves. Deadly technologies. Radical ideology of hate. Terror of threats. Terror. 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 War on terrorism. War against terrorism. Global war on terror. Global terrorism. 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 The evil terrorists. 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 My fellow citizens, the cause of peace requires our country to recognize undeniable realities. In the 20th century, the United States chose a policy of destruction of a kind never before seen on this earth. Our government chose to appease murderous dictators, plot chemical, biological, and nuclear terror, and kill thousands or hundreds of thousands or hundreds of hundreds of thousands of innocent people. And it has aided trained and harbored terrorists, thugs, and killers. America continues to possess and conceal some of the most lethal weapons ever devised. The security of the world requires disarming our military now. This is not a question of authority. It is a question of human liberty. All the decades of deceit and cruelty have now reached an end. It is not too late to overcome hatred and violence and turn the creative gifts of men and women to the pursuits of peace. There will be no more wars of aggression against your neighbors. Instead of drifting along toward tragedy, we will set a course toward peace. That is the future we choose. Good night. And may God continue to believe people are deserving and capable of human liberty. is where our nation finds hope, where wings take dream. If you don't stand for anything, you don't stand for anything. If you don't stand for something, you don't stand for anything. Fool me once. Shame on Shame on you. Fool me, we can't get fooled again. And this war will end in the defeat of the terrorists and totalitarians and a victory for the cause of freedom and liberty. In my state of the my state of the union, our state, my speech to the nation, whatever you want to call it. I know the human being and fish can coexist peacefully. We've never been able to confirm any connection between Iraq and 9-11.
In order not to offend or horrify those in the audience of a squeamish or prudish disposition, the sound of a bell will warn you when to close your eyes or turn away so that you may avoid witnessing certain scenes of an especially erotic or gruesome nature. For years I have told the almost unbelievable, related the unreal, and showed it to be more than a fact. If you've ever wondered what hell was like, this is it. A world where men and women live like animals, and the only human emotions left are hate and lust. Everything points to an inhuman violence. Or do you still stick to the alligator devouring oh. routine? One by one, they strip away the old rules, looking for new answers in one another's arms. You mean there are certain things nice girls don't do? Even if it means that man's millions of years of struggle up from the sea, the slime, the fight to breathe air, to stand erect, to think, to conquer nature. What do you say we see what's shaken in the outer limits? The most brain-paralyzing shock story of them all. Electronic hypnosis. It was a way of drugging a man's brain with weird sounds and strange pictures so that he craved for more and yet more. The terrible power of hypnosis used for satanic evil. A spell impossible to resist, ending in unspeakable torture. And now, if you dare, look into the hypnotic eye. I would say nobody has anything to fear from us. But we are going to control you now. We are here to make you our slaves. I'll open this mirror at 1.33. The precise moment in time when the gods are unable to resist my thrust into their domain. You'll never escape me, darling. The Princess of Darkness would have you for her own to join us through extreme pain. I feast on human blood. May be yours. So beware. People of Earth. I am an alien from outer space. All you of Earth are idiots. You're stupid minds. Stupid. Stupid. Can't you see you're being sentimental idiots letting your emotions run away with you? Your own fears have created the means of your destruction. It amuses me to watch your puny efforts. There is no forgiveness. There is no forgiveness. Torture, torture, it pleasures me. Now I will kill you. I'll put that scared you. We are all interested in the future, for that is where you and I are going to spend the rest of our lives. And remember, my friend, future events such as these will affect you in the future. God help us in the future. Minds in a muddle, like in a big fog. I can't make sense to myself sometimes. Well, nobody's perfect. Not even Satan's cheerleaders. A wise man once said the death penalty is about three things politics, politics, and politics. Of Stanley Tookie Williams is a reputed founder of the violent Crips gang and was convicted of no less than four murders. During his 24 years in prison, Williams wrote several children's books about the dangers of gangs, trying to discourage young people from a life of violence. His work earned him six nominations for the Nobel Peace Prize. California's Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger chose not to spare his life, saying Williams had murdered without remorse and that the continued pervasiveness of gang violence leads one to question the efficacy of Williams' message. So what does that mean? Kill that son of a bitch! It's showtime. Clemency is rare, and as much as anything, a political liability. Clemency can be seen when it's exercised by a governor as a sign of weakness or not being tough on one of the countries. Uh, supposedly great social issues. Fuck you, asshole! You can't do that. Wrong. Ladies and gentlemen, this is just horrible. Words can't express what we're all feeling at this very moment. 
We'll be back right after these important messages. In the 21st century, a weapon will be invented like no other. It can't be reasoned with. It will feel no pity, no remorse, no fear. This weapon will be called the Terminator. Well, there's a strict ritual to executions here at San Quentin, but this morning, early this morning, everything did not go precisely as planned. It went a long time. They seemed to have trouble finding his veins, and he appeared to grow frustrated. A guard read the death warrant, and the lethal drugs started to flow. He tried to keep his head up, then laid it back down forever. Listen to me very carefully, okay? You're not a Terminator anymore, all right? You got that? You just can't go around killing people. Why? What do you mean, why? Because you can't. Why? Because you just can't, okay? Trust me on this. Everybody, breaking news at this hour, a big security scare in Boston. Cable news viewers in this country were treated to hours of live coverage this afternoon as suspicious packages were discovered all over Boston. It is a measure of just how jittery, how on edge this country still is. In Boston today, a number of suspicious packages were found near bridges. trouble are professionals. Haircuts in the 70s? Yeah, we really want to discuss the style of them.
intended to thrill through the depiction of grotesque, violent, or supernatural events. Where am I? Someone has been watching. Somebody wants you in the worst way. Captivity. Stock prices generally higher here on Wall Street, and the rally is being fueled by Microsoft. I don't need
Dr. Almar, does it say what God's command is? To kill Americans. It's your government we fight, not you. It's your White House. One day I will go there. I will drive a truck. And drach, it will blow. You have killed our women and our children, bombed our cities from afar like cowards, and you dare to call us terrorists! Amanda White's boyfriend. Husband. Yeah, I was. You didn't hear? She was in Paris showing the fall collection. She got hit by a burst of terrorist crossfire, Palestinians, French police. Oh my god. They found me. I don't know how, but they found me. Work hard, Marty! Who? Who? Who do you think? The Libyans! Attacking our way of life. Attacking our way of life. There's no borders, no customs. They can go anywhere in the U.S. There's nothing to stop them. Don't wander into the Arab section. Or you run into one of the grand Muftis gangsters and they'll kill you, son. They'll slit your throat. Do you understand what I'm saying? American citizen, American citizen. Before we start drilling, where should we park the camels? American cowboy. If you're looking at me, you're looking at country. <laughs> about you, but these guys make me nervous. <laughs> Mr. Lacombe said for me to tell you, um, camel jockeys, that if you fuck with him, he's gonna cut off your balls and stick them up your ass. 
Did you guys eat this shit? You're a dead man. I'm not afraid to die. Are you? No. Allah protects us. Well, then, this shouldn't hurt. beginning to believe the illusions we're spinning here. You're beginning to think that the tube is reality and that your own lives are unreal. You do whatever the tube tells you. You dress like the tube, you eat like the tube, you raise your children like the tube, you even think like the tube. This is mass madness, you maniacs. The president wants you to fly to Israel. Israel? Well, Israel is America's best friend in the Middle East, and it's only 20 minutes from Beirut. You're going to get anything and everything you want to do it right. You claim you belong to a revolutionary organization. That is correct. We are freedom fighters. We are fighting for our brothers. But then you don't want to be associated with Nazis who killed six million Jews. Not enough, lady. Not enough. The Jews stole Palestine. They took our lands. If you were alone without that gun, you wouldn't be shit. Shut up, you American imperialist pig. The Arabs are fanatics on the subject of Jewish immigration. Are you Jewish? Objection. As a Jew, isn't it your mission in life to destroy the lives of Muslims? Objection! You hate Muslims, don't you? Sidebar, Your Honor. They don't like Jews, huh, Mama? Oh, sweetie. They don't like Jews. I tell you, I would love, love to come to Israel, but I'm just so scared. You could bring world peace, Asi. You just get down the street, nobody will bother. <laughs> nobody will fight. Oh, no, they'd blow us up. <laughs> A bullet in the desert is not unnatural, especially when there are so many gun runners and mercenaries about. in the U.S. What happened to you? I learned to love Allah. And, and what's the other one? Shuha. Shuhada. Right, that's it. The prayer before you give your life for God. It's an honor to die for Allah. Nice Mecca pilgrim. <laughs> My country, women do not... In your country, you treat women like camels and send young boys to their deaths in the name of your excuse for a god. Ten years is a long time, Ali. It is a long time to resist the temptations of American society. I knew one day I'd be called upon to serve a greater good. To serve Allah. Please, Colonel, these people are sick and hungry. In the name of God, have mercy. Your God. Not mine. I have a very important message for the leaders of the United States and the peoples of the world. You guys ought to nuke this fucking place off the map! Where's the motherfuckers? I got feeling I just uh, fly in and frag the hell out of them, sir. You drop that bomb, you got my vote and the vote of every real American. See, listen, Mr. President, my buddy Ace and I were having this conversation the other day, and just out of nowhere, accidentally, I let slip the word fag. 
Well, my buddy gets all bent out of shape saying, Ralphie, you got to be careful. You don't know who's around, you know? And then he teaches me this little trick. Every time we see one of them homosexuals, we use the word watermelon. And I said, geez, Ace, goddamn, that's ingenious. What do you call, what do you call blacks? He says, Texans. I said, what do you call uh, spicks or Spanish folks? He says, uh, he says, truckers. And finally I say, well, what do you call them Arabs? He looks at me and he says, well, hell, Ralph, we just call them sand niggers. See what I'm saying, Mr. President? Nobody gives a shit about no dirty ass sand nigger. And as far as their nukes goes, they're so Stone Age backwards, they've probably never even seen a button, let alone know how to push one. Turn off your television sets. Turn them off now. Turn them off right now. Turn them off and leave them off. Turn them off right in the middle of a sentence I'm speaking to you now. Turn them off! <laughs>